Hey, everybody. Um, this video is going to suck. It's going to suck to get through, honestly, but I feel the need to make it. Um, so, a couple days ago, I got a DM from InkThinks uh, telling me that Smash Bracket would no longer be continuing. And thinking about it now, it's it's still kind of surreal to just for just a part of my life to just be over. But it's it is what it is, and I have to respect Ink's decision. Um to end it for the reasons he did and I have to keep moving forward but that doesn't mean we don't have to look back to see how we got here so I kind of want to go through my history with this series and explain how this happened because it didn't happen randomly I'll tell you that much I worked to make it happen um, so, uh, here is the entire history of me working on Smash Bracket in like a free-form discussion. And sorry if I'm a little uh, silent here and there. I'm probably not going to edit this too much, and I don't, I don't want to edit this too much. Uh, it's going to be a little hard to get through but I want to I want to tell this story so it begins as most tales often do in the land of fairy tales uh, with an email uh, <laughs> so it was I just looked this up actually it was April of 2021 so about two and a half years ago I was in a server with some friends just discussing verses because that's what you do and Around the same time, I'm thinking of my own versus show. I'm, like, trying to cook something up in my head. But, like, I see this guy who is clearly not from, like, the versus scene. Like, he came in from a different scene. He came in from the Smash scene. I could tell that just from, like, his YouTube channel. Because it was all a whole bunch of Smash videos. And then he, like, started to develop this, like, web series with sprite animation uh, and it was like, oh, you're like a Smash guy who's like getting in the verses as opposed to like a versus guy who's uh, like a hobbies like Smash. So I just found that very interesting. And there was a clear passion there from the forefront for a lot of the aspects of the series. I would find out more about those passions later on, but... For right now, it seems like something that I would want to hop on board on. Because, th to me, this was an opportunity. It was a way to kind of prove myself. And it was a starting Versus series. And they had custom music before I joined, but it wasn't really custom. It was, like, mashups. And it was... They were okay mashups, but they weren't, like, wholly original things. And so I, I emailed uh, Ink Things and was like, Hey, uh, I would like... I like what you're doing with this. And I want to see if you would have me on as a lead composer. And shot him that email, sent my demo reel, and sent an example of me uh, with an animation I scored, which was actually the... Um, uh, the animation that Origin did for Frisk vs. Ness. I just looked this up. I looked this up in my email. I was like, what, what did I send in Ink? And it was it was the demo reel from 2021. Not the current one I have on my channel. Um, uh, but it was that and the Frisk Ness animation. The Frisk Ness animation. So, uh... That was what catapulted it. And then like, he sent me his Discord information. And then we started talking from there. 
and pretty quickly I was asked to join the team and this is a pro tip for anybody who's like trying to do what I do I offered to work for free I wasn't actually going to work for free uh, I just offered to because it, it's a it's a it, you know get yourself in the door you know sell yourself low so they can you know let them meet you up there that's some business tips I don't know if that's actually good advice. It's just what I did, and it turned out to work. Um, but th then uh, it was it was a whole thing with, like, well, they have an old composer, so they're going to bring in a new one. And I was like, I, I don't really want to do half and half with uh, the guy's name was Michael. I, have, I never even met the guy. I was just, like, a guy they found on Fiverr to uh, <laughs> to to do this. And, like, that was, that was a big theme with Ink was just, like, yeah, I just kind of outsourced a lot of this, and really the only people that were there from the beginning were like Ink and Lemon and Levi. Those were like the main people I saw there, and um, it was it was kind of a thing where it was just like, oh my god! Immediately, I was like, okay, what do I have to work on? And they gave me like a whole list where like, okay, here's all the matchups we have in round one. Here's what, why don't you pick out the ones you want to do and then we'll see from there. And then, then I was like, okay, no, I, I see you, but uh, I, I'm just going to do all of them, honestly. <laughs> because like, Smash Bracket animation takes a while to make. Usually we like get, uh, I want to say like, they're like the net... What am I? Well, there's a math term at the end. The average is like two months apart usually. So I was like, yeah, I'll probably just end up scoring them all separately and just do them as I come. And they were like, that's all right. That's cool. Uh, so I uh, I don't even remember what the first one I did was. Oh wait, no, I do remember what the first one I did was. It was it was a very short one. It was Isabel versus Ganondorf, and it was. Like I said, it was incredibly short, like amazingly short. There was basically nothing going on in that, and it was uh, wow, yeah, that was um, <laughs> it was interesting doing that kind of thing. I it was it was a thing too where like the bracket scores really made me explore myself musically, and it was a challenge to like get. The stuff I needed, and I was really hard pressed. I'm like, what, what are we gonna do for this? And I was like, oh, okay, you know what I'll do? I'll get like a, I'll get like a digital instrument that will be a whistle, cause I can't really whistle. I can't whistle a tune. I can, I can, I can do that. I don't even know if I might pick that up, but I can't like whistle notes. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna experiment a little bit with the bracket stuff, and I'll. Maybe that'll, like, differentiate it a lot. Uh, so, that was the first one I did for them. And like I said, at the same time, I was essentially making a pilot for my own show. But it wasn't really a pilot, because I'm not selling it to anybody. Um, and then, like, working on them concurrently is like, always been the thing. It's always been, like, I've been, like, doing Versus Universe and Smash Bag at the same time. And it's... It's been weird because the past few days it's just it's just been versus universe and I, I it feel it feels weird it feels very weird not having bracket stuff to work on but I I think it's for the best that I move on from the series I think God I can't even remember specifically if this was after or before Isabel Gandalf that was the first animation I remember working on like. Ink was like, hey, um, also, uh, we want a theme, we want a theme song. That or, like, I pushed it for it, because I'm, I'm a big sucker for, like, making theme songs. And I was like, okay, okay, let me, let me think. Um, alright, no, what if I make it, like, a medley of all of these Smash themes, uh, and, like, bookended, like, like sandwich it with life light so life light at the beginning life light at the end the rest of it is a whole bunch of stuff and like it's the in the in the second thing you hear after life light it's the the smash 64 three two one go <laughs> that was that was the big thing i i 
I, I, I really had a lot of fun with this because, like, I, I don't really talk about it too much, but I am just a massive Smash Brothers fan. I think the game I have the most hours in is Melee, not because I play it competitively, just because I, like, did the single player a lot as a kid, and I, like, reset the memory card so that I could do it all over again, and I kind of want to do that again, that I'm saying it out loud, because uh, I'm a sick freak and I like uh, Smash single player. <laughs> no, it, it was just, it, it's the series I hold so much uh, revelance for. And working for somebody who holds that same, like, revelance and that same, it puts puts it on that same pedestal that I do really, really told me that, like, no, yeah, this is, this is it, this is it. Like, Smash Bracket is good. <laughs> Smash Bracket is not, like, some fluke of, like, ooh, we just got kind of lucky, we just got kind of, you know, we're just taking it easy. There was real effort in there. I'm not saying there was an effort elsewhere. It's just... I've seen some versus shit that does does not have effort. I've seen people uh, use AI voices. I've seen animations that uh, do not convey character very well. I've seen a whole swath of nothingness. And... Smash Bracket from the outset was looking to be a lot better than that. It was it was looking to be uh, as high budget, quote unquote, as it could be, as it could feel. Um, and I think having a theme really solidifies that. Uh, now, me personally, I kind of embrace low budget feels if I have them. Uh, if I had like ten million dollars, I would probably like give it all away. <laughs> it's I don't need ten million dollars. Okay, uh, but like, no, it was it was always there from the beginning. And then uh, after the theme thing, I got uh, the next episode. I believe after that was um, U two versus Sephiroth, uh, and this like opened up a whole swath of Pokemon matchups. There were so many goddamn Pokemon matchups all in a row. Um, and I was, uh, I was really excited for Mewtwo Sephiroth because it was, it's like a matchup that spoke to me outside of like the bracket purposes. Because for some of the matchups, you kind of have to finagle them a little bit. And some of the matchups Ink picked, I'll be honest, I would not have picked them if it were up to me. It wasn't up to me, it was up to him, but... Like, uh, I probably would have not done, uh, because the plan was to do Roy and Crom versus Peach and Daisy, and I was like, I, I would have found something a bit different. I, I, I get what you're going for, but let's backtrack a little bit. It was, I'll be honest, it was mainly for, like, the, the RPG guys. It was, it was, uh, I, I, I'm not gonna say it was clear they didn't know what they were doing, because I think, I think Ink knew what he was doing, obviously, and the rest of the team. It was, uh, it was just kind of... It's like taking the surface level of the character and taking only that into consideration when making the matchup for them. And uh, that's something I don't like in Versus in general. Try and look beyond surface level for your connections. Uh, and if there's nothing deeper, I'm sorry, it's not a good matchup. That's, that's my... That's my personal opinion about that kind of stuff. Um, but... Anyway, Mewtwo Sephiroth, this was this was a big thing, and it, it was big because it was, like, the first real score I got to do, um, and I remember it, uh, getting the animation for it, I was like, okay, 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 I have, I have a lot of ideas, alright, I'm gonna sing on this, and he was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna sing on this, okay, <laughs> It's like I had the idea, like, let's do a vocal. Let's do vocals for this. And Ink was like, I don't really want vocals on this track. I was like, just, just trust me. Just trust me. And I, uh, I pulled this stunt a little bit. 
uh, uh, kind of a little bit of a time uh, we're like no I think this track needs lyrics man and he's like oh no I don't think so and in the episode itself you're not going to hear any lyrics at all uh, instead what you're going to hear uh, are no lyrics because I uh, exported the instrumental but the version that's on my channel uh, and that was the cover of it was like you can you can do the lyric version, you can do a lyrical version, but we in the episode itself we are going to use the instrument. And so I was like, that's fine. That's a compromise we're gonna make. Uh, we just I just gotta do it. Uh, it's getting to me again, and I'm like choking up a little bit. Um, but I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, no, 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 that's great, it's great, it's great. Uh, but it's not great. I don't love it, but I'll I'll do it because. I want to make more, and I don't, I don't want to push too hard on this, because I feel like I'm already pushing hard enough, and so, like, I guess in the version on my channel has lyrics, the version on uh, their channel, when they used to upload the OSTs, uh, did not have lyrics, and the version that's on streaming doesn't have lyrics, and, yeah, unfortunately, but, uh, in general, the episode was really well received, uh, in part due to my music, uh, but that's, I, I think that's taking away too much credit, honestly, because the animation was really good, and having that be there was so nice. It was so nice to, like, have, like, the seeds of a proper versus show I was scoring, uh, potentially until it... You know, you know, the thing with Smash Bracket that I knew going into it was that, that we were reaching a destination. And I had a plan for the destination that I might talk about when we reach, like, the actual ending, quote-unquote, of the series that's going on right now. Um, but it was it was always the thing where, like, I'm working towards, um, musically, adding something coherent to end it all. And I, uh... It's unfortunate that I'll never get to do that, but I might, I might do it on my own time because the the idea I had was pretty special to me, and um, I'm, I might share it again. Uh, I'm gonna move on now. I was actually wrong, uh, apparently, um, about Isabel Gano though, because I, I remember that being like the first. Well, I guess that is the first animation I scored, but it wasn't the first thing I I made for the channel. Um, I remember this actually because the the music for Falcon Falco was a little fucked up, so I helped with that a little bit. That was more of a mixed job, anyway. Um, but the first Sonic Fox, uh, that was that was oh man, that was something else. Uh, working on that was it was uh, whoo, it was a bad time. Um, not not really for me. Uh, Ink was just like last minute, like. Hey, can you like do like a, a super sonic like arming theme? And I was like, sure. <laughs> and and so my basic idea was like, okay, we're gonna do uh, the I think it's Corneria, right? Uh, from Brawl. But do 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 do. Sorry, I'm not really a Star Fox fan. I play the games though. I have played the games. I play the games. I'm just not. Uh, die hard for them, uh, but Sonic was like, "Yeah, we'll do uh, <laughs> we'll do live and learn, and uh, the Super Sonic thing from Mania because I'm a Sonic Mania show, and that was that was the basis of it. And I was like, okay, yeah, we did it. I made I made like a minute long score <laughs> for this animation, and then I got Isabel Gandalf. I was like, ooh, the animation's like a minute thirty seconds. That's awesome. So like, yeah, I was really excited for Sephiroth Mewtwo because it was like the first full animation I gotta sink my teeth into and that's part of the reason why I think I went a little little extra just a little bit <laughs> um, but after that it was and I'm just going like in release order on the Smash Bracket YouTube page so I could be wrong uh, I know there's a <laughs> playlist out there that has every single Smash Bracket thing ever released even the stuff that's unlisted uh, but I lost access to that when I left the public server because too many children on that server and I don't like talking to children online <sighs> I 
anyway, uh, so <laughs> after that was peak a pack and that was kind of one where I was wanting to do a little bit more experimentation with it. I was like, we're going to make this a percussion ensemble. We're going to do that. So a lot of it is based around like marimba and xylophone and then the ending having, uh, the, uh, <laughs> The Pikachu surf thing. I forget what that's a reference to. I think it's the opening theme in the anime. Uh, but, yeah, that was that was interesting. And then another Pokemon. Uh, Ryu Lucario. I think Warriors of Aura is, uh, was, like, one of the, I think the really first time we were, like, I'm really proud of what I made with that. Like, it was the first bracket score where, like, I would listen back to it now and I would probably not change much of anything. Like, with... Sephiroth Mewtwo, I would probably redo the vocals, because uh, I can sing better nowadays. Isabel Gerudo, I Isabel Ganondorf, I, uh, I'm, I'm getting mixed up because the the, 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 the track names, uh, they were, they were something else. A lot of them, I did not name. A lot of these, I did not name. Uh, Sephiroth Mewtwo was, like, the first one I named, I think. The Sonic Fox name was, uh, like, two names. It was Super Speed or Live and Let Fly. Isabel Ganondorf was Welcome Village Gerudo, Villa Gerudo, yeah. uh, Pika Pack was Hey You Pack and Chew, I, I kind of like that name actually, I think that's funny, and Ryu Lucario was Warriors of Aura, I, I'm not sure, I, I think I might, maybe, I'm not 100% on that, uh, but it was, it was more like techno, and I, I just kind of like that vibe, uh, like, earlier that year I made the Ken Terry track, and I was like, yeah, I really dig this vibe. I really dig like this kind of fighting game, side chain synth vibe uh, that I have going on. So I I, st I did that, and after that, uh, Greninja Diddy Kong again. These goddamn Pokemon, <laughs> four Pokemon in a fucking row. I was I was losing my damn mind. I was like fucking getting away from these fucking Pokemon, man. I'm not even a Pokemon fan. I gotta score all the Pokemon. <laughs> Uh, but Grenade Diddy Kong was actually a really fun one to score because I, I'm actually, I'm actually a very, pretty, like, okay fan of DKC. Specifically, DKC. I don't really fuck with, like, actual, like, original Donkey Kong, but, like, DKC is my shit. Uh, I, <laughs> I've started a lot of playthroughs of DKC too. Um, so, like, referencing the, uh, the, the Diddy Kong, uh, electric guitar. Uh, cause actually, the original ending for that animation was, uh, Diddy Kong was going to win in a very brutal way. Uh, he, like, crushed Greninja, I think? So, it was, like, the thing of, like, it's playing over Diddy Kong winning, so it makes sense to play his victory theme. Uh, with the actual animation, they ended up having Greninja win, so they switched it, and uh, they played it instead, I think, in the alternate ending. I forgot the word alternate for a second. Uh, yeah, it, it was, that was, that was interesting. A tropical Splash, also a name I didn't come up with. Also a name I didn't come up with. <laughs> and then we have Oreo Lucas. This one was a lot <laughs> this one was oh my god this one uh so like when we started uh ink was like i'm a big mother fan i'm a big mother three fan a lot a big thing in the series is timing the hits to music and we're gonna have a section in wario versus lucas where lucas is hitting wario to the rhythm of music how would we do that and i was like okay Okay, here's what you need to do, and I'll follow you. He was like, gotcha. And so it was, uh, it was, it was fun to, like, explain, just like, okay, no, here's how we're going to time it, and here's how we're going to do it. He was like, okay, cool. We're going to animate to that, and then you're going to score to it. I was like, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, I think... <laughs> I helped a little bit with the animation. I didn't animate anything. I just, I just said like, here, set a metronome to at one thirty, and that'll, that'll do ya. Uh, and they did. And actually, fun fact about Mother Reed. Also a name I didn't make, but that's not the fun fact. 
Uh, fun fact about it, it actually starts at 120 BPM. So when Lucas does the, uh, I think the 16 hit combo. Yeah, it's 16 hit. Uh, it actually bumps up the tempo to make the rest of the score a little bit more frantic. Because it's, you know, nearing the end of the climax. Uh... <laughs> So that, that's just a little tidbit about that. Uh, that's something I remember. Um, Banjo Yoshi. I did not score that. That's the last bracket episode I didn't score. And that's why it sucks. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> I would never claim any episode of the series really sucks. I don't think that's true. Uh, but... After that, oh man, I, I'm getting like mixed up. So like, I'm glad I have the YouTube page right next to me so I can go through it. After that, we have the the battle royale with Minecraft, and it was that was that was something else too. That was that was wicked to work on. It was uh, our first 3D animation, right? I think it was our first 3D one, and it it was a really good 3D animation. I was really excited to work on it. Um, yeah, looking back on it, it was the first one. Uh, there was a lot of love in there, a lot of finely crafted stuff going on there. <laughs> uh, and it was up to me to be like, okay, you're going to score Minecraft. Gotcha. Uh, and luckily, earlier that year, I did a Minecraft Steve versus Terrarian score. So I knew like some basic stuff I could reference with the Minecraft, uh, but... Actually added some stuff to, uh, and this was, oh my god, this is the first one I named? Because I came up with the name Bedrock and Roll. I came up with that name. I'm, that's still a fucking good name. Okay, no, it technically wasn't the first one I came up with, but it's the first one that released that I came up with the name for. Because uh, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about Joker Snake. Here in a minute, uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about Joker Snake. Uh, so yeah, it was interesting because like I was I w like I said I was really looking to experiment with my abilities with these bracket scores. I was like, what if I added a dubstep wub to this, or like a, a big old, and I, I looked up how to do it. I was like, okay, try replicating it. Uh, immediately worked. Could I do it nowadays? No, because I don't remember how I did it. I would have to open up the project file and see how I did it. Um, I could probably do it again now. I just need to. <laughs> also, I haven't really had a use for using that sound effect again. But uh, this is also the first instance of a motif developing in the bracket scores because... At the ending, there is a... It switches from... When it gets to Alex Enderman, it switches from like being kind of rock and roll to being orchestral. And there's a... Kind of a... A melody that the strings are playing. And that'll come back later when we talk about it. Uh, but, yeah. No, it was it was interesting. It was it was very, very difficult to do. But it was rewarding once I got that difficulty down. Also, just doing some quiet piano stuff. It's always fun. We're getting to the point now where I remember <laughs> working on them as that's gonna fuck you with me because I don't remember working on anything pre Warrior Lucas. I remember working on Warrior Lucas. Everything past that I remember working on. I don't remember uh, Greninja Diddy Kong. I do not remember working on that. No, no, I don't. Uh, but then we have Ice Claimers Duck Hunt, and again I was like. I want to challenge myself. I want to make this interesting. The whole vibe of this is that it is a extreme, like, retro throwback. What if not only I made this chip tune, but I limit myself the same way that the NES limits itself? And, uh, Cool Gunnings, not a name I came up with, uh, <laughs> has four tracks it has drums, bass, Melody and Harmony. <laughs> the same on the uh, NES chip. Same on the Famicom. You know, it was uh, it was challenging. I put a JoJo reference in there. <laughs> but it was, uh, 
it was true chiptune. You could have extrapolated the MIDI from that and put it on an NES sound chip and it wouldn't have broken the system, I don't think. I don't think anything would have happened. Anything bad would have happened. The point is, I, 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 wrote, the, I wrote the score the same way that an NES composer would have written their score. So, <laughs> that's... That's the basis of it. Uh, and then we get to this guy. All right. All right. We need uh, we need some context. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> the moment the nanosecond I joined the team actually ink like puts me aside and is like, okay, okay, no, no, hey, hey, hey. The whole reason we're doing Joker versus Snake is because. Uh, I want to capitalize on the series' musical potential. And I was like, okay! <laughs> Alright, okay. Uh, so, like, immediately I started brainstorming about stuff I could do. And I was like, okay, no, I got it. Uh, and before I had anything, I had the name. Because uh, House of Cards is just... what What a great name. I don't have to like do my own horn too much, but like it's it's got like the political angle that you need for a Metal Gear thing, and it references like the playing cards that you know Joker's a part of as well, like the tarot cards where the Joker is a part of. It was, and it was just fucking, and the calling card too. I think about it, it it was just like immediately clicked. I was like, yep, no, that's that's the name. And I got pushed back on that name. I was like, no, no, we're going to keep that fucking name. Uh, because I was going to reference it in the lyrics, and I did. Uh, so, House of Cards. Uh, I feel like you, if you watch the episode, you can really tell it. But House of Cards was, I think, the only score I ever made for Smash Bracket that was not tailored to the animation. And I believe I had, like, express permission for making things to be like, yeah, no. Uh, do what you gotta do, uh, <laughs> make the score as good as it can be outside of here, and we're going to implement it into the animation afterwards. And the actual animation I'm not really going to comment on, because it's that can be answered by the person who animated it, uh, but it was a thing where, like, the main thing we wanted to do was to create something special with the music. And I was like, alright, cool. And then Ink was like, what if he got a string quartet? I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it's just, it was it was a thing of like, no, I just really want this to be special. So like, what if he hire an orchestra? And, and I was like, it was, it was an orchestra first. I was like, slow down, slow down. Okay, an orchestra is an exponential increase in the budget of this episode, okay? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to compromise with you. We're going to do... We're going to find a live string quartet to play the string parts. And we're going to have the horns be digital because I cannot be fucked. I, I cannot be asked to fuck around with brass players. I am a percussionist and I will die on that hill. Only ones I like a trombonist. You know, you know what trombonist? I'm giving, I'm giving it real for you. Any of you who play tuba or trumpet, get the fuck out of here, okay? I hate you. Just kidding. Uh, but I, I do like trump trombones more. Though, if you play Barry Sachs, you're better than, like, every single brass player ever. Like, good for you if you play Barry Sachs. I, I respect you immensely if you play Barry Sachs. Uh, <laughs> it, and he was like, okay, we'll do that. And, like, I, I start searching around for, like, string quartets and eventually we find the one we would want to use I was like okay uh so like i have to uh write down all the all the parts for the for the strings to play because i write it down in piano roll in my midi and i have to translate that to like actual sheet music for the string players I was like okay it's been a while since i've done this but you know didn't go to college for nothing uh and i did that and I was like, okay, now we need, now we need to find a vocalist. And like, Ink was like, got it on it. We got a vocalist. And I, I listened to her. I was like, 
good, awesome, whatever she needs. And she was like, not she, because I never actually managed to like talk to her directly, but it was it was a thing of like, uh, <laughs> what she needs is she'll need a demo of you singing the song and a line with uh, just the melody that she's going to be singing. So I I don't really work like that. I <laughs> I usually sing a melody and like I figure out the notes after the fact. I don't really write a song to a melody. Uh, you kind of write song to chords and then the chords inform the melody. Uh, so that was interesting having to do that and then having to mix it all too. And I still have that uh, fucking project file. I have every bracket project file technically on my computer. I just I haven't opened a lot of them because I don't feel the need to. But sometimes I, I go back and like listen to the stems of the of the jo of of House of Cards, you know, J just to feel something. <laughs> and it was a thing of like, okay, you know, it, it's it's I know Joker's gonna win, but like, I know Stick's gonna lose, but like, I, I I'm gonna reference Persona a bit more than Metal Gear. <laughs> And it it was it was kind of the thing where like I'd compromise with it. I would like, I would do, kind of more personal leading instrumental, and the lyrics would be more about Metal Gear. But I ended up kind of doing like half and half with the vocals. And the vocals themselves were, uh, the lyrics were, I think pretty pretty simple to come up with. Honestly, uh, it it was a lot of like improv alongside the chords that I had. And then we sent it over and we got the vocals there. And the vocalist actually improvised uh, the stuff in the chorus where she, like, did a second take of the melody in, like, the negative space that was there from the original melody I planned out. It was like, Sir, lurking here in the shadows Watch you move away uh, She, like, out of, like, Hugging here The lurking here in the shadows She had those, like, interlude parts, and I think that adds a lot to that chorus. So it was, it was really nice. Um, and like she, I never, again, I never really talked to her directly, but apparently she like was really into the song and was like very down to do future stuff for us. And it's, that's another unfortunate thing is that we'll never, uh, I'll never get to have her back for round two for another Joker score. It's such a shame. It's, it's a, it's a real shame. We'll never get to do that. They're mainly because of the, the score. I think that's everything I want to talk about with Joker Snake. Uh, I don't think there's anything else there other than, like like I said, animation was not timed to the score. And I, I think you can tell. I, I really think you can tell. Because the rest of the scores are all timed to the... Except for this next one! Because <laughs> Ken Terry was also not timed to the score, but not because uh, he told me to do it. It's because I already made the score on my own free time. I was like, cool, I don't have to do anything for this episode. So I was like, oh man, this is great. I love doing nothing. All I do is sit back, relax, and you know, get some popcorn, you know? <laughs> uh, but Link Ridley was another huge, huge challenge because it was it was the first time where I like got to score an animation that was uh, feature length. <laughs> it was... That score uh, is seven minutes long, and it, I, I think you can really feel it. Now, I'm not, like, adverse to writing long songs. Matter of fact, I kind of prefer it. Uh, my ideal song length is, like, eight minutes, I think. I think that's I think that's the perfect length for a song. Uh, so, like, getting to do with seven-minute animation was really cool. I took a drink. But having uh, to go through that, that was, that was obnoxious. Not because of anything they did, but my friends can attest to this. This is this is a true story. Uh, I had the work in progress animation for this. Uh, 
I'm I'm dreading telling the story now, but it's it's too funny. But I'm still a little upset about it. Okay, no, no. <sighs> okay, I had the animation in progress uh, for this for this animation and the work in progress, and and it was on YouTube. And in order to watch it through and like get all the details I needed, I I watched it in 1.5 speed. <laughs> And so, so I, uh, I kept that tab open. I started scoring, and I, I suddenly noticed, hey, that's a little. Wait a minute, wait a minute, that's a little faster than normal. Oh no! I I click the little gear icon on YouTube. Lo and behold, it's still on one point five speed. So I scored the first minute and a half of the entire thing. <laughs> and, and the timing was completely wrong <laughs> because it was at 1.5 speed and it wasn't something where I could just like do some math and like uh like fix it I had to completely redo the whole thing because it was it was very like time sensitive it was it was extremely like two of the animation kind of timing it was oh man oh man Oh, that, that was this that's probably the silliest story I have for, for for making the bracket scores is yeah no I accidentally put the animation on 1.5 speed and I started scoring to it then I realized my mistake and I had to start completely over <laughs> luckily I still have like all the, all the uh, ideas from the score I made previously but uh I still to this day my friends asked me hey Sky when's the 1.5 speed cut of the of Link Ridley I'm like it's never going to come out because it's the same project file that I worked on it's just I changed it I changed it uh, but there's actually an Easter egg in Link Riddick I have never seen anybody catch at all in uh, Ballad for the God of Death, which is another name I partially came up with. So I don't think I came up with the idea, but I came up with the wording for it. I'm going to sneeze. But in the uh, kind of open orchestral section, there is uh, there's a guitar solo underneath it, and in the guitar solo... Uh, you can hear every single uh, song that Link plays on the Ocarina in Ocarina of Time. Except for the Prelude of Light and the Song of Time. Now, the Prelude of Light is... Uh, actually, I believe maybe the Prelude of Light is in there. I'd have to listen to it again. I know the Song of Time is on there because the Song of Time is what uh, kind of sandwiches the track. It's what opens and closes it. I, I like to call them sandwiches because it's you know it's just it's just it's just set up and payoff you know start if you start something with a thing and end it with the same thing it's awesome and also you save some work because you're just writing the same thing I didn't even write that Kochi Kondo did <laughs> the same me a lot of work uh, <laughs> I wanted to do that and like have the the Ridley theme interspersed throughout there and it was uh, it was uh it was a fun nightmare to to work on i'd say it was it was daunting it was a lot of time working on that specifically but once it was all said and done i was very happy with my with the end result and nobody likes that score and i'm still upset about it you know what fuck it fucking leave a comment if you like the link ridley score real ones will <laughs> What are you getting to? How, how far are we in the video now? To the, to the fucking 43 minute mark? Like, yeah, I like Link Ridley. You go, Sky. <laughs> uh, but. Oh my god, can you hear my chair? Woo! <laughs> then we had Incineroar Wolf, and it was. By the way, I say, I say Wolf. I, I never learned how to pronounce the L in the world. In the word Wolf. So I have to force myself to say the L in the word wolf, because otherwise I say woof, which I, which is what I want to do, and I live I, and I, I feel like a fool. Red Roner pointed that out to me. He was upset at me because we played Persona Five Strikers together, and I said Sengichi's nickname is Woof, and he was like, "Don't you mean Wolf?" And I was like, "Fuck you," <laughs> and we never spoke again. <laughs> That's not true. Uh, but Incineroar Wolf was just kind of like, yeah, just make it wrestling. I was like, gotcha. Uh, 
think the most interesting thing about that is I actually used a capo on the guitar part, I believe. No, I'm thinking of another one. I'm thinking of another one where I used a capo. Never mind. Fuck that. Uh, it, it's not true. Uh, it's not, not true. Fake, fa fake, fake fact. <laughs> No, uh, Incinero Wolf, I have nothing to say about that track. It, it was just kind of like a one-day deal. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm done with it. There is one part of it I really like, though, where it's like, boom, I really like that part. No, but, uh, Game & Watch, we fit. No, this one, this one was something else. This one was crazy. Uh, <laughs> I got the uh, the animation for it, or the temp, the, the work in progress animation for it. I was like, ooh, ooh, how the fuck am I gonna score this coming off of Wolf and Cineroar of all things? And Ink, you know, Blessings of Art gave me the direction of like, this is basically a Looney Tunes sketch. I was like, you know what? I fucking got you. So, um, watch your figure. I don't think I came up with that name. I do not think I came up with the name. Um, an Apex Predator, I didn't come up with that name either. Uh, but watch your figure. The main inspirations for that were, you know, the chipsune stuff, uh, Orchestral flourishes with like little anything stuff, and, like really bombastic orchestral stuff. It was like, not referencing anything in particular, just like really bombastic orchestral stuff and like the, the soft electronic piano that you hear in a lot of like Wii stuff. Because, like, another thing too is I kind of wanted to like encapsulate the Wii because. The Wii Fit Trainer is like one of the only things in Smash, aside from the Miis, that really encapsulate like the the Wii era to me. The music of the Wii era is very interesting. It's like it's the stuff that I grew up with because I'm I'm like 23, so like the Wii came out with I was six, uh, and it, now I have another tall white brick next to my TV, and it's a PS5. <laughs> uh, just shows as as we get older, we also get stay the same, you know. Uh, but you know, I wanted to like pay tribute to the Wii era as well, and just having that electronic piano be like the thing, and just having it be real soft, and then kind of sharp to like showcase the anxieties of the Wii Fit Trainer that she's having, and then ending it with uh, what I call the Ape and Hero theme. Yeah, this is going to come back here in a second. And I want to explain why it came back. Because a lot of people were confused by it. I don't kind of blame them. It's kind of obtuse why I brought it back. Really, I wanted to introduce the idea of bringing back parts of the previous scores in new scores. And this is this would be the best way to showcase it for me. Uh, but, man, Game Watch Refit was such a... Uh, it, was, it was a fun challenge to do. And I'm, I'm really glad that uh, that it turned out the way it did. Um, Rosa Robin was not that. Rosa Robin was like, hey, we want you to do an orchestra score. Gotcha. Um, this was... Uh, I, I remember I, I saw this animation. I, I vividly remember the first time I saw the animation. I was like, this is awesome. I really love this animation. And it has the boy... Uh, you know him from the first universe as... Every other character, flip D switch. <laughs> it's it's flip D switch and Sun Mills. Those, those are the two voice actors I know. <laughs> that's that's also not true. Uh, but it's they are the ones I use the most. Question mark. Uh, I should I should get flip to voice something soon. I know what role would be good in. At the DM after this. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, so uh, Rose Robin was like, pretty much immediately was like, oh, no, I, I really like this. I really like the, the direction I get to go for this. I get to go with this huge orchestral kind of thing. And it's 
it's it's gonna be a waltz. Um, it's like one two three one two three one two three one two three. And we're gonna call it waltz through the pages because I'm. You know what? Sometimes you have to live, laugh, love. I just uh, man, I. <laughs> Ah, oh, man. I, I really love the name Waltz Through the Pages. It, it makes no sense, really, but I think it makes no sense in all the right ways. Uh, it, just, it, it, it invokes the feeling of the track, too. It's this kind of dire thing, but also there's, you know, light piano in there with a common observatory theme, and then bombastic uh, trumpets come in, and then it's this light thing where it's just a nice high note on the strings... And then it's back to the bombastic thing. Then it's a minor key variation of the fire emblem theme, and it's just uh, it, it was it was uh, whew. I have nothing else to say really. It's just it was it was fun, it was fun to do. Oh man, and I think Rosa Rotman was the was a good choice to introduce the orchestral stuff. The pure orchestral stuff to Smash Bracket. Um, I'm kind of trying to talk about some, one of these next ones. Uh, I'm probably going to stop and take a break and then talk about it again. Uh, but, like, whew. okay. Okay. Pit Samus. Pit Samus was the one I was talking about before, where uh, I actually had a capo on my guitar just to, like, I'm not, I don't have any ideas for this. I, I don't know what to do. I'm going to put a capo on the first fret and see what happens. And I came up with a score pretty much right after that. It's just, just you, you do one thing, you limit yourself with one thing, or you just change one thing. And immediately ideas start to come up in your head. Um, the other thing I did with Pit Samus was I wanted to kind of have a very zen kind of Metroid feeling part of the track, and that's the part where Pit gets thrown into the cave first uh, before he breaks out, and the way I did that was actually, it was, that part is just guitars. <laughs> There's no synthesizers to that. It is just guitars with effects. Now the effects are on heavy on those guitars, but still it goes to show, I don't think anybody knew that those were just guitars underneath that because they honestly sound like synthesizers but uh your old dsp archetype of churchy uh there's a there's a shininess button i could press and boy did i press it uh, <laughs> another thing too is that there's actually references to the scores i made uh previously with both of these two characters because that same year i did pit zagreus as a score and i did uh Samus Doomslayer as a score. So, near the ending, there's a kind of a, a riff I lifted from the Pit's Agria score, and near the ending as well, I think a little bit before that, there is a dum, ba da dum dum, bum ba da ba da dum dum on the guitar. That's a reference not only to the Samus theme, where it's like bum, ba da bum bum, bum ba da ba da bum bum, bum. It's also a reference to the Samus Doomslayer track. Uh, so, I don't really have anything else to say about that one. Uh, yes, I do, actually. Uh, that is the next iteration of the 8-bit hero theme. And the reason I wanted it there is because, in my mind, Game & Watch and Pit have a connection to each other that I don't think anybody really talks about. Um, and that's that they're both characters essentially plucked out of their eras put into Smash and completely taken over by Sakurai. And Game & Watch specifically is is also this. I don't think people talk about it as much as Pit because it's mainly just Smash and like Game & Watch didn't get his own, his own game like Uprising to really shine in, but they're very similar characters from the lens of Smash Brothers. And I wanted to emphasize that by having them kind of share a theme. And... What's important is that it happens for Game & Watch at the end because he wins, but for Pit it happens in the middle because he's not going to win. In fact, it, it fails and the chords underneath it are wrong. <laughs> they're not they're not wrong, technically. No chord is wrong. 
but the chords are different and not as uplifting as the Game & Watch version. So, that's the reason why they share a theme, is because of that. And, speaking of sharing a theme, Alex Folger. This one was, uh... <laughs> Another thing where it's like, hey, let's really push you, Sky. Let's really, let's really push your limits. Uh, we want you to make a KK slider track. <laughs> like, okay, I'll see you if I can do it. Um, and lo and behold, I found a plugin uh, that I don't remember who it's by. A completely free plugin that replicates KK slider, including the KK slider whistle. So I, I sat down, I listened to. A whole bunch of KK Slider songs, and I was like, "Okay, no, I got, I got this." Uh, and so, I wrote the score as KK Skyder. <laughs> it's the stupidest fucking bit. KK Skyder. Um, but like, uh, it was. It was fun. It was, uh, man. It was interesting too. Just have it. Just having that extra challenge. You're like, yo, you're you're gonna do King of Slider now. <laughs> so I was, I was having to write a melody around it, and I, I figured like, it's kind of a pop punk thing. So it was, I think it was the name of the what's the name of the track? KK Rockin. I think KK Crafton. That was the name. That was the name. I think I came up with that. Uh, <laughs> you can tell because I don't remember. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, that one also ends with the same motif that ha uh, is in the Minecraft Battle Royale, where it's, where it's do -da 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 Uh, so book getting both of Alex's victories with that theme was like, yeah, no, that that's her theme, that's her musical idea. Um, I'm trying to think now. Is there anything else I need to talk about with this specifically? I don't think so, uh, but I do want to pause before I talk about this next thing, because, oh man, I have things to say about Sonic Fox 2. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Sonic Fox. Sonic Fox 2. Sonic Fox 2. Alright, I didn't rank this score. And that was the problem. Uh... <laughs> Incro this score actually I believe um, and found somebody to do the instrumental uh, I don't remember why I don't remember why he didn't just ask me to do it I might have said no I can't remember I don't want to look it up uh, but it was he found somebody else to do the instrumental he found somebody to do the vocals he wrote for it and I was like alright cool just um let me let me see it when you when you get those stems for the instrumental and the vocal, okay? And it goes like, sure, yeah. And and the like the time comes, like I get the stems. So it's like, okay, we got it, we got it, we got it. Um, hey, uh, if you wrote or if you recorded the stems for. Sonic Fox 2, the mid-break. I don't want to hurt your feelings. I really don't. But the nicest thing I can say about that is that where they were extremely unprofessional sounding stems. They were extremely straight out of Fruity Loops sounding stems. They were not they were not of professional quality and I could tell, and Ink could tell. So, suddenly, it's my job 
to turn these, quite frankly, bad stems into something listenable. So I get started. And the first thing I do is I get rid of the entire drum track. And I replace it with something else. It's like, great, 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 good, good. Now it's finally something you can listen to. Next thing I do is I look at the guitars. And if you send guitar stems, I'm not saying you have to do it, but if your distortion is not up to snuff, include a version that's just the dry signal, because I could have I could have reamped that and made it sound so much better. I, I I could I could tell that the guy was like doing something with like a live amp, and it just wasn't working. If he was using direct signal in, into an interface. And it was giving that it, it would be bad, but I would have repur I would have preferred DI nothing signal over what I've got because the guitar stems were oh my god they were also like extremely unprofessional sounding and it was like I said it was my job to fix it up. The only thing that sounded like pretty good was the bass. The bass was like, all right, I didn't have to change much. I still reamped it, uh, but it was all right. So what I did was I decided to try and reamp as much as I could, including the bass. So I put the guitar through my effects, but I lowered down the amount it would do it so that it doesn't muddy up the tone because if you put... Because it already had distortion on it. If you put two things of distortion on something, it's going to get extremely muddied. So you have to... Uh... Oh, man. You have to really be careful about that. So I, I do that. I do it all. And I mess with the vocals a little bit. Uh, and I try mixing mixing a version of the song. And I, I said to the ink, he's like... Oh my god, this immediately sounds better. Um, so, like, we want you to send it to our the vocalist that we have. Because he wants to hear it, too. I was like, okay, you know what, I'll share it here. Uh, I was like, I get the I get the guy's Discord information. I'm like, hey! He's like, hey, uh, here's the song. Uh, he's like, hey. I have notes. The last thing I want to hear right now is that this guy has notes. Buddy, I have spun straight garbage into something palatable, and you have notes? <laughs> I'm, I'm being too mean for dramatic purposes. The, the stems weren't great, but they weren't the worst thing in the world. It, it, was, it was bad enough where Ink could tell that something was up, uh, but... Other than that, yeah. So, uh, the guy, I, I asked for, like, okay, do you have, like, stuff you wanted to fix? Uh, because, like, in my mind, the guy's probably like, okay, there's probably something in the vocals the guy isn't really feeling. Maybe he wants to redo a take. Maybe he wants me to, like, lower an effect or something like that. Uh, the guy gets a mixer friend of his to listen to it. And sends me a wall of text. Just being like, hey, uh, can you, like, do more? <laughs> it was like, at this point, I was, I was done. I was done. I was like, I was upset and I was very angry. Uh, I think probably because, I mean, if the guy had heard the stems before... He, he shouldn't have sent me, like, half of the stuff he sent. Because he was like, hey, can we, like, turn down the distortion? It's getting kind of muddy in the guitars. I was like, no, I literally can't because otherwise it sounds like crap. So, uh, I I got so mad that I, like, had, like, a burst of anger. Like, I, I haven't had in, like, years. And I fucking, like, punched my wall. It was so bad. I was so fucking mad. And it, it became a thing of like, I can't do this. Listen, I'm done. I'm fucking done with this. Uh, if you need me, I'll be in my chambers. And I I made one more version. And then I sent all the stems of everything I made to the guy. 
because I was like, you know what? If if you want those changes made, it's not gonna be me who makes them. It's it's gonna be you. It's it's gotta be you, honey. So I sent that over, and uh, I don't think there's a villain in the story. I honestly don't. It was it was a thing of like probably just like he just probably didn't know that I had to redo a lot with this fucking song and uh, still I <laughs> I I don't really get a lot of credit for that song because I didn't write it, ink wrote it, didn't perform it. But man, if I weren't there, it would have sounded so bad. Oh my god, it would have sounded like a MIDI. It would have sounded like a stream MIDI track. The only, like one of the only good steps there was was the fucking guitar solo. Yeah, it was. Oh man, it, it was bad. It was bad. Oh, it was so bad, and like I had to work on it. It, it was. I had to work on it a bit too much, and like. It, it was a thing where, like, sending me a groceries list worth of, like, stuff you want me to change was, like, had enough. I'll do, like, a lot of the stuff you ask of me, but after this, I'm out of here. Peace. And after that, I listened to the full track because it gets done. Uh, and I assume his mixer friend does, does all the mixing. Uh, or he did the mixing himself. Uh, Jimmy did props to him. But, like, he... Just to add insult to injury to me. To me specifically. <laughs> he fucking re-recorded a bunch of his lyrics. He recorded he re recorded a bunch of his vocal takes. Just because he could. Stuff that I spent time trying to fix. Stuff he sent me notes over. He decided to change. And I, I was really upset about that, specifically. It was, man. I honestly, I have nothing against the guy in particular. It's just, it was the thing of like, this, this is too much. You're, ex you expect way too much from me, it, and you should have pushed harder. It, like, if I said no, you should have pushed harder just to get me to do it anyway, because I would have preferred it over this role. I don't like this role. I hate this role. This role sucks. I I, I can I can never be an engineer. I I actively dislike do working on mixes for other people's songs. If so, if somebody sent me a note, like a list of notes, like that guy did, I I would have lost my I, like every day. I would I would go insane. I would go absolutely insane. I have no idea how audio engineers do that. They they have. A million more props than I think I, a lot of people give him credit for. Uh, infinite patience, audio engineers. Unless you get a bad one. Um, <laughs> fucking fucking Sonic Fox. And I didn't. I didn't even technically record anything with that. I just. I just sent the stems their way and just fucking fucking fucked around. And they even edited the drums that I wrote for it. They changed the drum part because they had the stems for it. So, when it says drums by Sky, it's technically not true because they fucked with the drum part I wrote. So, Limit Break was a pain in the dick to make, uh, but the best in the battle list, though. <laughs> It's kind of weird because I, I think about it. And I think didn't Lil Mac come out after this or before this? But no, Red and S came out after Sonic Fox Two, which is a little crazy to think about. Because Red and S, I I picture as this huge monolith of an episode we made, but it came out after another huge monolith of an episode. Uh, but. Red Nest was another one where it was very clear that Ink wanted something special to happen because the animators, essentially everybody who was an animator on the team, worked on Red Nest. And I was like, oh, okay. 
this is a long ass animation. This is this is longer than Link Ridley, I think. Uh, I think it's like seven minutes. Uh, so th that was it, it. Was it was tough? It was it was really tough. But as soon as it was like, yeah, no, there's this big part in in the animation where the Pokemon get like a leg up, and I was like, you know, it'd be cool if we could like do like a little nod to the Pokemon anime thing. I was like, okay, okay, okay. What if I made it like a cover of the Pokemon anime thing? <laughs> It's like a, a, something that I don't think anybody on the team expected was was just me just doing like, yeah, well, like what, what if we just did like a little instrumental cover of it in the middle of the track? And there's a lot of little nuggets too. I think that I think Red Ness is like the most Pokemon centric Pokemon track I made for Smash Bracket, and for good reason. There's a lot of Pokemon there, uh, but there's a lot of little nuggets in there. Uh, mainly at the ending, the the thing that happens when Charizard is holding Red is like a variation on the Mega Charizard theme from Pokemon Origins, I believe is the name of it. Uh, and like uh, having like the music kind of die down and become a little bit more somber when Espeon is there to like represent the psychic versus the psychic. Uh, Lots of stuff like that. Uh, I could probably talk about it more if I was listening to it. But also, Best of the Boundless blew up. I have no idea why. It might have been because it was right after Limit Break, and Limit Break was a huge song. For better or for worse. Uh, <laughs> I have a gripe with the song because of a personal story that I, I did not enjoy being a part of. If you enjoy the song, that's okay. I just liter I literally have... <laughs> I I have like PTSD with that song, man. Uh, the best of the malice was like something where it was like, yeah, no, I could tell they want they want something special, so I'm gonna make something special, and I did, I did. I feel like I still feel very good about what I made with best of the malice, and I still go back to listen to it uh, occasionally. Um, I think best of the malice too was the first one that I uploaded to my channel. Uh, close to the first one, at least. Maybe... No, I think KK Crafton might have been the first one. I think it was either KK Crafton or Best in the Malice. It was... It might have been KK Crafton? I think it was KK Crafton. Point is, I uploaded... I started uploading the scores to my personal channel with... Permission from many things, of course. And it's been good. <laughs> it's been good. Uh, but no, Lil Mac Midman was another one where I was very adamant on like getting the references right. Uh, because I'm actually... I, I'm, a, like a, I'm not like a huge fan of Punch-Out, but I, I'm more of a fan than most people, I think. I think Punch-Out's kind of the shit. I think Punch-Out's really cool. Uh, and also very funny. But Punch-Out also has killer music. Specifically the Wii version of Punch-Out. I think Wii Punch-Out is amazing. I think Wii Punch-Out is like one of the best games ever made, honestly. It is super good. It is amazingly good. Uh, just a, a super good boss rush from start to finish. There's, there's nothing wrong with three punch out except that you can't do the doc Wheels thing without the club nintendo disc uh but <laughs> punch out was like a huge thing where like i wanted to get this right i really want to get this right i want this to feel like punch out and so like i took a lot of cues from the uh from the wii game and that's soundtrack and a lot of the cues from the smash ost of course that's another thing too. I try to reference characters the same way Smash references characters, and where's everybody here a little bit with Piranha Plant? Because there's a choice in the track for Piranha Plant Olimar that I feel the need to explain. Uh, but Lobak Minimum was was a thing where like I really need to sell that this is a punch out track, and I think the first thing you hear is indicative of that because the first thing you hear is the inverse piano riser. And then, pum, 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 p
that I wanted that to be the first fucking thing here because that that gets you in the mindset of like we're starting the fight, but we're not quite to the midpoint yet. We're just getting warmed up still, and a lot of it too was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then make sure I had the arm stuff too with Min Min because uh, I wanted to subtly reference Min Min's own track, but I wanted to more reference the arms theme. Uh, it was like more so reference that with with Min Min, uh, but it's, it was it was very much like a thing where like I want the majority of this to feel like Punch Out, and having the trumpets and the uh, Chinese instruments alongside each other just kind of selling the clash, and then something that doesn't really happen in a lot of versus animations too. So it happens in Little Mac Min Min, where there's a lot of downtime. There's a lot of time where Doc and Mac and Min Min and Biff are talking to each other and I was like how am I going to score this I was like oh no wait I, what if I just like suddenly cut out and it's just like clean electric guitars like there we go that's the vibe that's the vibe we want midwest emo kind of vibe to it and like the, as soon as that clicked I was like oh then we can build from there we can have like a muted guitar solo throughout underscoring who is like on screen because like for mid minute it's gonna be the arms theme or Lil Mac is gonna be the punch out of the theme blah, 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 blah. and then ending it with a big old uh, guitar solo and then also <laughs> kind of tucking the viewer a little bit because uh, throughout the whole thing we have a ba ba da 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 we haven't done any of that it's never been in the score and whenever I hear that, actually, I think about Brandon Loss. Now, finally, Punch out his back for the Wii. What? There's no Mike Tyson on the Wii one. Bullshit, cock. <laughs> I, I love that. I, I love uh, the old Brandon Loss shit. It was, it was a lot of fun. I uh, just getting to do that, and then ending it with a huge bombastic. Every instrument's doing it, and the guitar solos are ripping out. It's like, ba, ba da da, ba, ba da da. Even if Mac didn't win, it was important to end it that way uh, because it's it's Punch Out's last hurrah in this tournament until he makes it to the losers. But we'll make it to the losers now. Oh. And then we had the weirdest fucking animation I've had a score since Wii Fit Game & Watch. All of our put on a play. And, okay, I gotta explain to this. I gotta explain this animation in, in, like, in, like, layers, okay? So the first layer is the opening where it's very peaceful. The second layer is when it turns into hell. And the third layer is when All of our starts kicking ass, okay? So, <laughs> so for the first layer, I just wanted, like, peaceful, like, electronic piano, kind of like Wii Fit Game & Watch. The second layer, I want to kind of do an orchestral thing, uh, but the third layer is going to be like entirely rock, and have like a big epic rendition of the Pikmin theme underneath it. Uh, that turned out really well. I think people were really receptive to that. Uh, <laughs> when we talked about the names, I named the best of the boundless. Uh, obviously, did not name Limit Break. I did not name Punchbowl. I did name Nip It in the Bud and Radiant Rondo. Uh, so, uh, Nip It in the Bud was me. It was all me. I I only had one note with all my prior plant, which was uh, the same note I got with. Uh, no, I don't think it was even that. Because that was just me goofing off. It was like. There's a JoJo reference here. What if I just did Jorno's theme in there? <laughs> was like, and people were like, hee hee, JoJo. <laughs> so, so, the one note I got from Ink is like, there's a shot where they're all circling around each other. Can you can you play the Avengers theme? <laughs> so, okay, Ink thinks you got it. So, I, I found a way to fit the Avengers theme in there. Uh, and important, too, uh, is that there is a version of Bowser's theme in all of my prop plan. And, like, People ask, why? Well, people may ask, like, 
Why is Bowser's theme in Piranha Plant score when Bowser is a character already in the bracket? And I was like, well, think about it this way. Piranha Plant was revealed in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate to a certain song. That song is a metal rendition of Bowser's Castle theme from Super Mario Bros. for the NES. So I wanted to reference the song that the character first appeared in Smash Brothers with. Uh, it's the same reason that you hear Holland in the uh, Minecraft track. Because that is the first song you see with Minecraft characters in Smash Bros. Uh, so that's the reason why. And then ending it with a big climatic uh, thing was always the idea. Uh... I don't think I have anything else to say about that. And, oh man, we're getting to the end. We're getting to the end now. I correct her. I correct her, man. Uh, so I actually got help with this one. Uh, I got help from my friend, Nerio, who is a big fan of both Castlevania and Fire Emblem. More so Castlevania. Uh, like a lifelong Castlevania diehard. And I was like, hey... Sorry, sorry. Hey, can you help me with my ideas for this? And he was like, okay, no, here's what you gotta do. You gotta, uh, you gotta do, like, Eternal Bonds for Ike, uh, Divine Bloodlines for Rector, uh, but you should probably try and make it, like, an actual Rondo. I was like, huh, you know, that's that's a good idea. That's a really fucking good idea. So, the actual form of the, the track is, uh, was A, B, a C A, so that is the form that a rondo can be. Rondo is pretty nebulous in my research, uh, but it basically it's just theme variation, theme variation, theme variation. A B A C A D, so on and so forth. Uh, so that's why that piano riff. Ba ba do ba da do. Always comes back in there because it's it's the rondo. That's the theme of the rondo, uh, and it just comes in and out. And there's also eternal bonds in there. There's also divine bloodlines. That one's more obvious, but eternal bonds is there. Uh, even the beginning, it's the the strings. But that's uh, that's eternal bonds. That that is eternal bonds. That is eternal bonds. And that's the end of scores man that's the end of the racket scores I there's nothing else there I, there is one more score that I have made already for a bracket it's for Luigi Simon but uh, my time with the scores for bracket is over and even after this it's it's over i've i've talked to ink and i've come to the conclusion that i cannot make music for the series anymore not because i'm unable not because they won't have me but because i am not in it as much as I want to be. The thing that always kept me making, always kept me pushing forward, was the light at the end of the tunnel when I struggled so hard to help and make a lot of these scores. Was that there was another one. And... I don't know if I'll be able to do it if there's not another one. There's never going to be a next time to prove myself, to challenge myself, to enjoy writing music for myself. So I can't in good conscience make something I know will only drag the episode down. I I don't want to phone it in. I never wanted to phone it in. Every single score I've made for the bracket Every score I made for Versus Universe, every score I've made in my life, I want to say, is, 
had at least a modicum of effort put into it. I've never tried to phone it in. I've always thought about things carefully. And I've always tried my best to do my best. And if I can't meet that, then I know I have to leave. So I am no longer the lead composer for Smash Bracket. It has been a great two and some odd years. But it's time to move on. And I have projects that I need to work on. I have things I need to do in my life. I have emails to send. I have jobs to maybe get. I have a lot of things to do. And the time in my life where I worked on this web series is over. And I have to treat it as such. But that doesn't mean I can't look back at what I, along with this entire team of people, have accomplished and not feel pride. Because we should. We should feel proud of what we made. We've made something that is special. We've made a show that people enjoy. And enjoyment should be cherished as entertainers. There's always the next thing. There's always a new thing to do. But I will always look back at Smash Bracket with fondness, with heart, and with love for what we all have been able to accomplish. I hope you look forward to Luigi Simon. It is the final score that I am ever going to make for Smash Bracket. Um, it's been a good ride. But I've, met, I've reached my destination. I'll meet you all there soon.